it's Rebecca. Thank you for joining me today. I have a big announcement to make. I have finally decided on my next big project. There's a little bit of a backstory to this. As you know, this entire year, the year 2020, has just not gone the way any of us could have imagined, much less planned for. At the beginning of the year, I was looking ahead at a pretty full schedule, nicely paced with a mixture of giving talks at conferences and study days, a couple of hands-on sewing workshops, a bit of travel, um, several uh, days in collections museums studying extant garments, uh, two markets planning to go to, uh, so lots of things to sew and make, a wide range of things, trying to think what would interest people, what people are looking for, what they want to buy. And somewhere along in there, I, I thought I should try to make myself a new pair of stays because the pair that I have that um, up to a year or so ago fit fairly well. I'm afraid menopause changes the body shape and they no longer fit. So somewhere in there along the way, I thought I need to make a new pair of stays for myself, even though I really knew that I had no time to make myself any new garments, any new gowns. So it was going to be new stays, but only really if I could find the time in amongst all of my business, um, you know, paying work. Well, coronavirus and the subsequent lockdowns and closures of um, markets and museums and sites and schools and just everything. Um, aside from the personal impact that we all have felt in having to stay home and not seeing our friends and family and events that we're looking forward to enjoying being cancelled, aside from that it's been the personal impact and the business impact and overall, I think the uncertainty of it has been the most frustrating and most worrying for everyone. So when this all happened in March, uh, I was in the US at the beginning of the month, um, still looking forward to a full schedule for the rest of the year and talking with people about making more plans to, to add even more. Um, and I thought, well, at some point I'm going to make new stays. So I was booked onto the stays pattern drafting and the construction course at the School of Historical Dress at the end of March. And in anticipation of that, I had friends in Colonial Williamsburg do my measurements for stays, got home from that trip, and immediately everything went into lockdown and the School of Historical Dress had to close amongst many other sites and venues and institutions and businesses and small enterprises and um, people like me, everybody shut down. So I didn't quite know what to do with myself and didn't know how long that was going to last. And so I thought, right, well, I won't be making stays. So I, <laughs> in my savior at that point was Burnley and Trowbridge announcing their, their Sew Along series. So I leapt onto that and made a lot of things that, you know, quite, quite straightforward, not complicated fitting, just nice, uh, relaxing sewing. I have not made every project that's uh, been in the Sew Along series. In some cases I've skipped certain ones and then in other projects I've made two. So for example I've just finished two bed gowns as part of the B&T Sew Along series and that has been wonderful. This was also a time too with no commitments, um, events to plan for. Uh, I Took the opportunity to get moved into my new workshop space. This is a room at the back of my husband's business, so I'm the only one that comes in here, my husband occasionally, and it's big enough that once we're able to get together with people again, I will be able to hold small sewing workshops here. But meanwhile, it's been a fantastic opportunity to go through all of my sewing supplies and all of my fabrics that were all stored in plastic crates and get everything, kind of get an idea of what I had and how much of what I had and 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 sift through you know kind of allocate fabrics to fabric to projects and think about when I get the time um and at this point when I was doing this I think it was starting to look like all the time in the world really um so so yeah so April moved into the new workshop sewing along with 
Berlin Trowbridge and giving thought to launching a YouTube channel. So I was trying to learn video filming and editing, um, you know, what you do with setting up and scripting videos and how you film them and then post-production editing and getting it all nice and pretty and coherent for you. Um, that has been a huge learning curve. So that's kind of how my second quarter April, May, and June have gone for 2020. A little bit of sewing, moving, filming. But somehow in there, I took my eye off the ball with some sewing and got a flare-up of tendonitis. So in some ways, this gift of time couldn't have come at a better time to be struggling with strength and soreness and issues with my hands. But that's getting better and things must move forward. So I now have a beautiful workshop that I'm looking forward to sharing with you and you're going to see a lot of filming happening here, I think. And somewhere along the way, looking ahead, I took a poll on my Facebook and Instagram pages saying, next big project, what would you like me to do? And the answer came back loud and clear, the Deborah Sampson dress, which you may or may not be familiar with. This is in the historic New England collection. Uh, it was worn in, I believe, 1785 by Deborah Sampson. Uh, it was a kind of a, a hand-me-down or, sec or uh, second-hand goods dress. It was not new to her, but it had apparently altered to fit her. So this is very intriguing. So I thought, okay, great. This will be a fantastic project. But meanwhile, yeah, I think if no one steps forward and asks me to commission that to fit them, I will end up making this for myself, which comes back to the I need new stays issue. So it's starting to look like, okay, it won't just be a gown, an exciting you know, reproduction, recreation, reconstruction project, but also involve stays. Okay, lovely. And then I thought, well, to cover things off, as I'm not going to get a chance to see this gown in person at any point, I should see if I have enough information really to do it justice. So I emailed the curator thinking, museum's closed, I'm sure, she's probably working from home, but we'll see, you know, what response, no hurry. Um, and in fact, she did reply and she said, I am working from home. I have a lot of information on this dress in my files in my office, which I'd be happy to share with you once I get back to the office, once things are reopened enough that I can go do that. And I know that this will not be top priority for her when she does return. And meanwhile, discussions on uh, Facebook uh, prompted someone to private message me saying, I've seen this gown in person and have noted a few things. I'm really excited about you possibly making a version of this. Um, shall we all put our heads together once you've got further details from the museum? And I thought, yes, there is no point in rushing ahead and reinventing the wheel and making a lot of guesses that turn out to be wrong if the information if people have already looked at it and can help um, make this make this a good project so sad to say yes i did say that i would be starting this in may or by the end of may it's on hold now and meanwhile, more information, the more I look at the fabric, I'm kind of questioning the fabric that I have in my stash, whether it's really the right thing. So I'm going to keep looking for some better fabric for that. So what to be making? Um, that was the one that was voted for. At the beginning of the year, thinking that I was not going to be doing any sewing for myself, but knowing that if and when I did get a chance to make a new gown for myself, I knew which one I wanted to make. I didn't think it would be this year, I didn't think there'd be the time. And there's also the issue of stays. I still need new stays. But the gown that I really, really have been wanting to make for myself, and this is very selfish, this is not something I have been thinking, oh, I wish someone would commission this, or I hope someone, I wish someone would come to me saying, please make me this gown. This is really for me. And it's this. This is in the National Museum in Munich, in Germany. It is a 1760s long sack, what some of you will know as a robe a la Française. Excuse my poor pronunci pronunciation. 
It's quite a straightforward one. I don't believe there are any significant alterations or updates to it. It seems to have been made in the 1760s to a very classic 1760s style with a compare stomacher front, classic robings, classic trimmings for that era. And I've never made a long sack before and I think this would be a fantastic one to try to copy or to learn from and learn how to make one based on this. And I have the right fabric for it. And this is complete chance. This dress had, had been on my radar for a little while, and but not really on my make list. And at some point, some point, quite unrelated, I in on a trip on a trip in the Netherlands, I obtained two meters, this might be three meters, two meters of this fabric, which is a glazed reproduction chintz fabric, not quilting cotton, and it has been, I believe it's a heat pressing process they use for glazing, not something that's been painted on. But the, the motifs are not exactly like this gown, but the right colors and the right color proportions, the right amount of hints right amount of blue, for example, I felt was quite critical. So I have this fabric, can you believe it? But it's quite expensive fabric. And that was another reason why I didn't have any immediate plans to make this. And then, a little bit of a windfall, being a US citizen, and it never occurred to me that I might even be eligible, so I hadn't applied, hadn't inquired, but as a US citizen, even though I've lived in the UK for 21 years now. I qualified for the, the payments being made out to, I think, all adults or all taxpayers, um, $1,200. And that was out of the blue. Actually, a check literally in the post, open my post box, and there's a brown envelope saying from the US Treasury, open it up, and there is a check for $1,200 took it round to my bank and they said, yep, fill out a form here for the currency conversion, no problem. And suddenly, yes, I spent the money on bills and all the things, you know, that you have to, like, you know, wasn't just going to splurge on fabric. But, suffice to say, Corona has paid for more fabric to make this. I call that a windfall and really, really lucky. <laughs> From a purely selfish point of view. But meanwhile, the eight, that question of stays hasn't gone away. I'm going to need stays. Thank God here for Patterns Fashion 5, which I've mentioned already. And the stays that was the subject, the basis for the course that I did, the School of Historical Dress last year uh, on pattern drafting, is a 1760s uh, style and construction. It is very similar, in fact, to the stays that I need to replace anyway. So I'm already sort of leaning, thinking these are the kind of stays that I want as my go-to stays. They are fully boned. Uh, they are strapless. They are beautiful, in fact. <laughs> and I already have some wool sateen, which is what the Extent Originals were made from as the fashion fabric. And having already in my class on the ARC method, this, these were the stays that were used as our basis for learning that method. So even though I was not able to attend a, a workshop this year to solidify, consolidate my knowledge, my understanding of that pattern drafting method, I think I've got enough knowledge to at least get started. I will also need for this gown, some sort of wired uh, some sort of wired skirt support in patterns of fashion five there are possibly three different X stance that would be suitable for this time period and for this shape with the volume being at the hips but I think for flexibility for use for other gowns just as an addition to my wardrobe I'm going to go with the pocket hoops. Another factor in that decision is the fact that I have the right materials in the supplies list for this with lots of synthetic whalebone. 
I want to I want to use this learning experience to get as close to a reconstruction to really learn from this research as much as possible and not just as a oh nice idea I'll do my own version you know do a riff of that using whatever materials I really want to do as close a replica as I can in the circumstances without hands-on study and without exactly the original materials but the other the, the large hooped petticoats involve steel or iron and I don't have those supplies and in this uh, time period I don't think it would be quick, easy, or cheap to source those materials. So the pocket hoops is what we're going with. So you go back and add all this together. We have a fairly large project involving stays, pocket hoops, and a long sack gown with a certain amount of, well, suitable for the period trim we've got and I have not yet determined whether that trim all involves hemming and whether that is going to be a problem in terms of my hands after the stay making as well, which at this point I do hope to do entirely by hand. A mock-up, I will machine stitch the ch boning channels. But that's where we're at stays, the hoops, and a big gown. And I have just been offered a place at Oxford University starting in September. So if I'm going to do this, I need to do it now. I need to get started now, and I need to finish by the middle of September. Oof. 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 It's just scary. So my plan at this point is as far as sharing this with you, I want to share everything, the process, you know, you be a fly on the wall here in my workshop while I figure things out, do things, screw up, do them again, um, do them better. Um, thank God for erasers on pencils and seam rippers and all of those things. Um, I can't promise that there won't be furrowed brows and under my breath swearing and tears and blood and all those things that go with doing things for the first time. <sighs> but there you go. And this is sort of three months to do all of this. So video wise, filming wise, I'd like to do a weekly video. But the way this is going to get started is next week I have ready for you on Monday, and this will be in the cause tube guide, uh, is a, a presentation that I've prepared about the Isabella McTavish Fraser project from last year. So that's really exciting. I'm really, really proud of that project and in putting this presentation together for you. Then I'm going to do a short video, short. Then I'm going to do a video about my workshop, uh, setting up and, and how I've got it laid out and what my my um, priorities were for what I wanted from my workspace in terms of ergonomics and fabric storage and bits and pieces. Everyone is different. I think we all enjoy seeing what solutions people have found for the things that they want out of their productive working space. So. I am working on a video for that and that will be ready not this coming week but the week after that and that's the first week of July goodness July already then the week after that I should have a video ready that is about the stays that goes through all of the pattern drafting and making a mock-up and getting through the first fitting and finding out how successful that pattern draft is or has been and what tweaks might be necessary, but hopefully at that point ready to then go straight into construction of the stay so that then the video the following week or possibly might be a two week gap, I might alternate a couple of um, other topics in there. Um, we'll see how we get on to then have the second video uh, about the construction of the stays to see that through making the stays um, using Patterns of Passion 5 and all of, the, all of the layers and the construction features that you see in there and then pocket hoops. So if I can get to the middle of 
August with stays and pocket hoops complete. I have some thoughts to share on how to approach fitting in gowns like this, whether you're using a pattern, a commercial pattern, or a gridded pattern, or you've cut your shapes, the period method, uh, and then fitting issues and how to deal with fitting yourself, how to be your own mental maker, as I call it. Um, so I'll have some thoughts to share on that too. The dressmaking itself, the gown, won't take that long. The trim will probably take even longer than it does to make the gown. We'll see how that goes. But that's the plan. And now that I've committed it to you, shared it with you, I am now accountable to you to stick to this plan and try to get this all done by the middle of September. If you have any comments or questions, even if it's you're crazy, <laughs> please put them in the comments below. Please click like on this video. And if you're interested in following along and seeing how this goes, do click subscribe and click the notification bell that will let you know when I've released a new video. So here we go. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.